Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we're going to be talking about possibly the most important microcontroller that you can make that you'll use in most likely all or most of your creations. It is the microcontroller to rule them all. It is the microcontroller that's going to allow you to minimize the amount of buttons and dials and indicators you have. It is the microcontroller for the instrument panel. Now, if you already know how to do this, you probably don't have to watch this video. But if this is something that interests you, specifically how to make this instrument panel box work with your various lights, your various uh, dial controllers, so value inputs, and all sorts of stuff, this is for you to watch. Now, I'm going to break it down into the various steps, but pretty much it, I'm going to assume that you don't know how to make a, uh, how to connect your composite cables in this video without assumption is going to be the basis of how I explain this. Otherwise you probably don't have to watch this. So we're going to start off with the empty microcontroller. I usually always start with this one. There's nothing in here and we're just going to call it instrument panel test. Instrument panel test and test is what I just give them when I make them in the videos. I already have one of these in existence. And what we're going to want to connect is a variety of things. So we're going to start with a composite input and a composite output. Now we're going to use both of them, but for different applications. Now you're going to want to have four. So not five, but four, uh, just input, start with input for now. And we're going to call this channel one. We're going to call the next one. So I probably should have done it properly, but regardless, this is channel two. This is channel three and this is channel four. So this is three, this is four and this is two. So we have one, two, three, four. And then this guy can go at the very back and it's going to be a tall microcontroller, but narrow. And the reason for that is for different applications, which I will explain in a second here. Now, obviously, this is if you have inputs. Now, most likely you're going to have outputs. So let's start with that. You have a bunch of outputs. And the application for this is in a case where you have something like your instrument panel. I'm just going to start from scratch here connected to, let's say, lights, just in this case, lights. So we have light one, two, three, and four. And now what I wanna do is have these lights turn on with different, by different channels. So what I just connected here, and then inside the microcontroller, as always, first isolate them based on whether they're input or outputs. So in this case, we're going to have an input feature and it's going to be a simple composite read on off switch. So this is how you start off. And in theory, all you need to do is paste four of these, connect your composite to them, and then set the channel that you want them to be. So this is channel two, this is channel three, and this is channel four and connect them to whatever you want to be turned on in that channel. So this is the most basic form of just making a simple switch controller. So in this case, you need to connect this to the this guy, the input, and you don't even have to connect the output path yet. But once these are all connected, and of course we need electric, so we'll put a quick little battery back here for us. And connect everything. I guess I could have also had infinite electric, but that doesn't matter. Oh, mistake. You will find that there are no buttons on this. So first things first, you have to tune up your instrument panel. So put a button, call this channel one if you want, make it a toggle. And likewise, you can also use arrow buttons. You can also use flip switches. They all work the exact same way. The only difference is a flip switch can work without a battery or without electric power and 
Otherwise, the uh, arrow button is identical, just a toggle. The flip switch is always a toggle. So channel two, channel three, and channel four. And if we give that a shot, spawn it in here, you'll find that this is channel one, two, three, four. So that's how you make just a simple button style controller. Okay, but now we get a little more complicated than this. So you could just save this as your button controller if you want, but I'm gonna teach you how to use this as a whole. So right now we have only buttons, but what if you wanna make one of them be a dial function? So if we come here, what if instead of the number channel four, you want it to be either a gauge, so a, the gauge or a dial. They are both the same and we'll keep it on channel four. So say you wanna read your electric battery power. So this charge, you wanna read on that little dial, not to fear. So first thing what we do is we'd go to channel four, change it to be a number output, or sorry, number input, okay? And once that's a number input, you'll see that you can no longer attach it to this composite read, but rather you now have to use another one and that other one is gonna be your composite write number, okay? So just like this, and what you'll need to do is in here, you'll need to set this to be your channel four. So channel count can stay one, but we want it to start off on channel four, and you'll plug that in to this one here. So remember how we kept one up here that we didn't use for anything, okay? The output path, that's actually now used. So now this, you can leave it as it is. Even this one here, you can leave. But this one now acts, and technically what you can do, what I always do is just add four of them like this, and then depending on what you need, and you'd attach this here, you'd make it start off on one. So now by default, that's input four. So now whether or not you need to add or change it around your controllers, you can easily just swap these guys and connect it to wherever they need to be here. But now we can spawn it and we can now add this channel to be our ch battery charge. Now obviously this light won't turn on anymore and we need to make sure that we've added the composite output. So now with this in control, we could still turn on all of our other lights but this one is reading our battery power. As you can see, the electric and the value are identical, so it's actually reading that power. So we've covered dials, we've covered uh, buttons. Obviously, you could change them from push button, you could change the arrows to whatever direction you need. Now the last thing is an indicator. So let's put indicator, and let's leave it on channel three. Now, in the case of an indicator, an indicator is not something that you uh, toggle on, but rather it's a reactionary. So whether something is on, that air, that little indicator will be on or off. So we'll take composite right in that case. So just like we did for the numbers system, and we can make it start off on one, we could make it go all the way up to four, and the night, or go up to four, start off on one, and the reason why they have this pass through is so you can do something like this. So now we only have, we like if you were to put one another node on this number four, you may have a problem because now you're gonna be controlling two things with one. But if you put it on three, for example, and what we need to do first is change this guy to be an input. So now we're no longer outputting three, that's fine. And we come back here. And this one, either you leave it here or not, but you plug it into channel three. See, like this, this you could have left here and just made it su such that you have a very modular microcontroller. But now channel three is there. So we input that. And what we're gonna do is make our indicator on. So the best thing to do actually just put a simple toggle button, connect it to the electric. If the button is toggled, the indicator turns on. Now we can test that. So likewise, you turn on these guys. See, this is now a push button, so it's fine. But if we push this button on, then that turns on. And if you turn it off, the indicator turns off. So now you have a full working modular 
system for your instrument panel that you can customize if you don't have if you're having only buttons for example then all you need to have is output on off and in that case you can just drag your length down and save yourself some space and you just leave that node without anything but the point is you can now use it as just a simple button or you can use it as these other dials use it as indicators as well as the buttons so this is the most efficient and simple way i think this is the best microcontroller you can use because you will use it in any creation that uses this type of system it's a uh, modular so it's pretty easy to to put to use and it doesn't i mean it takes up a decent amount of space in one length you could obviously change the shape of the microcontroller around but it is efficient in just uh, not taking up the space of four buttons instead you can just have it in one little microcontroller so thank you for watching hopefully you learned something if this is new to you if not thanks you for watching anyways stay tuned for more videos and as always happy stormworksing